Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, is the Lazare Ultralight about to make a comeback? A proposed new UAV is designed around the camera. The Japanese Space Agency says they're headed for the moon. I'm Brie Cross, it is May 8, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. In the golden age of ultralights of the late 1970s through the 1980s, the twin-engine Lazare was, to say the least, unique. Now a Georgia entrepreneur wants to return the Lazare ultralight to production. And with your help, Gene Yarbrough might just get it done. ANN readers may recognize Gene's name from his reporting as a stringer during Oshkosh over the past several years. An aeronautical engineer, Gene has brought that expertise to ANN on topics ranging from high-tech engines to ultralights, which remains one of his passions. Now he hopes to bring his Lazare Nouveau to Air Venture 2015, and he has turned to the crowdfunding site GoFundMe in an effort to offset the considerable cost of starting up an aviation business and making the trip from South Georgia to Wisconsin. Yarbrough writes on the GoFundMe site, quote, This fund is intended to help restore the production of the fantastic Lazare Ultralight. This much-loved flying plane was very popular in the 1980s, with several thousand units sold by Ultralight from Canada. Unquote. Check out Gene's GoFundMe site for more details. While this is certainly getting to be a common story, a company has established a Kickstarter campaign to fund development of another UAV product. A company called Polyhelo is developing a hexicopter that they claim offers unique features. Their design is dedicated to the mission of aerial video and the camera and its gimbal are protected from the elements. All the functions can be controlled from a single mobile app and images and videos can be shared wirelessly with a touch of a button. According to the description of the aircraft on Kickstarter, the housing for the aircraft's integrated 1080p HD camera automatically extends down from the flyer at takeoff and tucks away upon landing. They say this feature is designed to protect the camera from damage during shipping or operating on rough terrain. The camera's enclosure is also weather resistant. If the required funding is achieved, deliveries are planned to begin in December of this year. After the break, the Japanese target an unmanned landing on the moon. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Japan's space agency, JAXA, has set a target of landing an unmanned mission on the moon before the end of this decade. And analysts say that if they are successful, it could have implications for the moon's commercial development. More ambitiously, JAXA says they hope to land a man on the moon by 2025, according to Japanese media. Reactions to the report from JAXA vary. One report indicated that they are trying to build financial support by running this mission through the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. Another report said that JAXA could not afford a, quote, one-on-one, -on -one, unquote, approach to a trip to the moon. A series of repetitive missions with a commercial component would be necessary for funding to be secured for the plan. Ideas ranging from high technology to tourism have been mentioned. This report also speculated that this moon mission could mean significant progress towards a return to the moon. Well, it's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Here is this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Bree. Hi, folks. As I sit here, it's, uh, oh my gosh, almost midnight. Just came back from the fourth trade show in as many weeks. We did AEA, NAB, Lakeland, and then, of course, AUVSI, which concluded a few hours ago up in Atlanta. 
a lot of conversations, a lot of interesting things going on. And we'll be talking about some of that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, there's been an awful lot of activity on the Airborne Partnership front. We're about to name the next, uh, well, probably 10 or 20 associations in the mix, and then we'll be adding another 20, 30 right after Oshkosh, and that'll bring us up to half strength or so uh, of the 117 that are committed so far. And by the time we get to that point, we'll have a whole lot more than that. I like where it's going. I still continue to believe that we're discovering that there's amazing talent out there in the small to mid-level associations that not only deserves to be tapped and listened to and heard from, but has the potential to create, as a result of this consortium, a whole new way of leading aviation. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But let me talk to you about one thing that just kept coming up over the last couple of weeks. It happened a lot at Lakeland. It happened somewhat at... Uh, AEA, not at all the National Association of Broadcasters, of course, very few aviators there per se. And it happened quite a bit at AUVSI uh, when we were talking about general aviation matters. And that's basically this. Um, a number of the associations out there have staked their claim to various areas. Uh, the one that claims, of course, to be the biggest, baddest, you know, 600-pound gorilla, of course, is AOPA. There's a fair amount of disillusionment. This was something that uh, was expressed a lot at Lakeland, uh, not just from uh, flyers, but even from former staffers and to a certain extent a couple of current staffers, that there's a bit of a malaise going over there because they're just not quite sure where AOPA is going. And to be perfectly honest, we see this effort and that effort, but we just don't see the mission like we did under Phil Boyer and even to a certain extent under Craig Fuller. It's hard to say where this is all going to go, but rather than bitch and moan about it, I'd like to invite Mark Baker uh, to have a on-air, recorded or live, chat about the real mission of AOPA, about the things that really matter, about making targets, making, uh, setting directions, and most important of all, just really addressing the malaise that general aviation is experiencing at the moment. I think this is something that would be beneficial to us both. We'd really like to understand where they're at, the communication has not been that great, and we'd more important like to know where they're going. What say you, Mr. Baker? We're ready anytime you are. After these messages, a major UAS industry event is rebranded. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International announced a rebranding and evolution of its global industry event for unmanned systems, drones, and robotics. The new event, titled Exponential, encapsulates the tremendous growth and innovation in the UAS industry. The commanding officer of Strike Flight Squadron VFA-151 was relieved of duty due to misconduct. Commander Kurt Bolkin was found guilty of violating the Uniform Code Military Justice Articles for failure to obey an order or regulation and maltreatment. With the rules looming for the implementation of UAV training requirements, we've been expecting this. The Unmanned Vehicle University is offering a two-week drone UAV pilot home training program. Certificates are issued at the end of the program's completion. North Dakota officials say that in 2014, 
Their state became the first test site chosen by the FAA to assist in integrating unmanned aircraft with manned aircraft into the national airspace system. They have invested $22.5 million into the site. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Following a memorandum of understanding announcement in February, Avianca has signed a purchase agreement for 100 A320 NEO family aircraft, the largest single order ever made in Latin America's aviation history. The agreement, which includes the A319neo, A320neo, and A321neo aircraft, will allow Avianca to maintain one of the youngest fleets in the region. Fabio Ramirez, Avianca's chief executive officer, said in part, quote, this historic order allows us to solidify our passenger experience strategy in local markets on a broader scale." Unquote. Established in Colombia in 1919, Avianca was the first airline in the Americas and is the second oldest airline in the world. To date, the Avianca Airline Group has ordered nearly 300 aircraft including 276 A320s and 15 A330s. Well, that's it for our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend.